Coach, if you would begin with an opening statement and we'll open for questions. Well, first off, congratulations to, to Dave and Baylor. They played a great game today. He had them ready to go. Magnificent defensive performance by them. I mean, 10 sacks, four turnovers. You know, we're into analytics, and I bet you don't ever win a game, you know, with, the, with that happening. So congratulations to them, well-deserved. Um, you know, we had the perfect storm of, like we just said, 10 sacks, four turnovers, you know, twice in the, three times in the red zone, you know, early on. And not only do we not get any points, um, we actually give them seven with the pick six. So, you know, your defense can't play lights out forever. You know, eventually the ball broke and we gave a big play. So <clears throat> it's just a shame is what it is. Obviously, Matt's injury, um, you know, is disappointing for the team, for him, you know. So we didn't do a good enough job calling plays around Luke and making plays. Um, you know, tough situation to put him in. But again, congratulations to them. I'm not going to sit up here and say, you know, talk about our miraculous season. Um, we did some neat things, special things, some great memories, but we didn't finish it. And that's what we came here to do, not just to get a participation trophy. So, you know, not real excited. Our first question will come from Dave Oven of the, of the Athletic. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Lynn, did you get a sense of what Matt's injury was? Do you know if he has DSDI or any other sort of insurance? Yeah, I'm not going to get into Matt's insurance. He does. Um, you know, th this is, does not appear to be that type of injury um, where that would ever be a factor. Um, you know, his, actually his, his x-ray was negative. Um, you know, he just wasn't able to go. So I don't think that that's a factor. We'll move along to John Sokolov of WCBI. Hey, Lane. Uh, what were your emotions when you saw Matt get injured? I know you were obviously very much so involved in the game, but what were your emotions uh, seeing that, and how tough was that for you? You know, I probably didn't do a good enough job. That's obviously a difficult situation, you know, especially when a kid's playing in the game. Um, you know, so my main, my mind raced with a lot of thoughts right there. You know, and that's just for my love for him, just like I would if it was my own son um, in that situation. So, you know, maybe I didn't do a great enough job with the team because, you know, I was really hurting for him in, in that situation because I know how much he's put into it, how much it means to him, and for that to be taken away like that, you know, really sucks. Next up will be Nick Suss from the Clarion Ledger. I'm sorry, but thank you. How do you evaluate what you saw for Luke? I know you haven't got to watch the tape yet, but first big exposure. What's your take the I thought Luke did some good things um, once he got playing a little bit and made some out of rhythm plays, you know, running around. Um, that's a hard setting. That's a really great defense. They give a lot of people problems. You know, not many people score a lot of points. Like I said, coming in, this would be like an NFL game. I thought more low scoring. You know, you're going to have to protect the football, play field position at times, um, you know, which we weren't real aggressive in the fourth down stuff because of that. And, you know, we, we just we screwed it up. Like you said, you're going in to kick another field goal at least, and we get a ball tip for pick six, you know, and miss two field goals. So that right there obviously changes the outcome of the game a lot. Go now to Michael Katz from the Northeast Mississippi Daily Journal. Lane, obviously, uh, you know, not the way you would have liked to see Matt's last game kind of go, but just get, uh, you can talk a lot about him this season, kind of what he's meant to this program now that his, his all his career is done. I mean, what's, how, how could you best sum up what, what Matt has meant to, to Ole Miss? You know, he, he's been unbelievable and things that you don't see. Um, you know, besides the plane, just how he is. And, you know, I had a cool moment this morning in the team meeting, just listening to him talk. And, you know, I told our own coaches, you know, and players, you can be a freshman and you're supposed to listen to the leaders. You can be a 50 year old coach and you should listen to this guy. I mean, what he said today to the team about after last season, after the Outback Bowl win, all he wanted to do was come back and impact players the way that Elijah Moore impacted him off the field as a person. So, 
Um, he, he's just real special. He, he's going to make a great NFL player and, and do great for for a franchise. You know, this was we didn't play well and we had things happen that I just you know wouldn't have guessed. You know, all the COVID work and everything, and then you know I'm looking there playing the game, thinking our kicker's out, our quarterback's out, and our right tackle's out. So you know, kind kind of freak stuff. Next up will be Neil McCready. Following that, uh, we would like to uh, ask for questions for the players, please. Uh, hey, Lynn, a couple of things, uh, if you don't mind. Um, I know we already addressed uh, Jeff Levy leaving. There's reports about Wilson Love leaving for Oregon. There's talks about DJ Durkin possibly having some opportunities. I was wondering if you might could address their futures uh, on your staff. And then also, does Luke's performance tonight change anything with the way that you evaluate the, the transfer portal and quarterback? Um, there's a lot of questions there. Uh, Wilson is going to Oregon. We're happy for him. Again, when you win, you know, like we did and have a historic regular season, you know, people come and, and want a piece of what you're doing. So, you know, that's happened. And um, we lost a couple the year before. Lebby, obviously. Um, going and splitting time between there and, and back here. Um, you know, we, we appreciate him doing doing that in the bowl prep. Um, you know, that, that was not easy for him. And um, so, and, you know, the way our defense played tonight, uh, DJ's probably going to have a lot of opportunities. But they've, he's done a great job all season. Um, I don't know of any other opportunities or anything. Um, but he's done a fabulous job with our players, not just performance, but recruiting and flipping over a roster that, I mean, you guys have followed it here. You know, when it was one of the statistically over the last five years of defense here, you know, as bad as anybody in the country. So he's done a great job, along with the other coaches, of flipping that roster over to play like they did tonight and like they did most of the season. part of this uh, kind of going off what, what uh, Neil said a little bit there, but did you see enough from him tonight where you would be confident in him being your future starting quarterback? Yeah, again, that's a very difficult situation for any backup quarterback, especially a freshman, to go into in a Sugar Bowl versus a really good defense. And it's not like we were lighting it up before he went in. We were struggling before. So um, I don't think we did a great job, um, you know, game planning and I thought they did a great job and you know I thought it showed up you know they, they out coached us today on that side of the ball and Dave's done that to a lot of people including myself at times Yeah, I think that's something to be proud of. But I think Coach Kiffin kind of hit it on the head where, you know, no one really cares about how you start something. At the end of the day, it's about how you finish it. And um, it's a long time to have a bad taste in your mouth. So I'm sure when we take take a step away from this and get some distance, I'm sure we could pick out some positives. But for right now, it's um, not great. Uh, Sign with Chance, it, uh, we had – Ten or two, good. That's good, but we all we all wanted to win this Sugar Bowl, so yeah. I think it. Um, yeah, I mean Matt's a special player, um, special leader, and a special player. So when he's not there. Um, you know, he brings a lot of juice to the team and obviously a lot of excitement and a lot of hope. Um, I think guys had a lot of trust in, in Luke, and uh, I'm personally proud of how he stepped in there. It's, I think Coach Kiffin said it's a, it's a really difficult situation. He's a young guy, and, you know, I'm proud of him. But when, when Matt that went down, that was tough. Uh, yeah, when Matt went down, uh, we knew we was in a funk. Uh, Matt, he's a great leader. He, uh, he gave us juice. 
he 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 run our offense, so we knew it was gonna be tough when he went down. Uh, we try to stick with Luke and uh, bring him confidence, so we knew it was gonna be tough. Okay, we have a question from Nick Suss with the Clarion Ledger. Snoop, going off of that, when, what was the message with the move kind of in the offensive puddle after the quarterback went down? Just kind of what were you guys saying as veterans to try and keep things afloat? Uh, we just tried to get Luke confidence and just keep going. How so? Oh, we'll say that again. How did you do that? Uh, we just try to have his back and play hard as we can. Okay, the next question is from David Eubin with The Athletic. Uh, yeah, for the players, what was it like uh, having Matt on the sidelines after he got hurt, and, and what was he saying? Uh, when he came back, he was just down, like, because he wanted to beat out there. But we had, we kept telling him, we got him, we're going to win the game for him. But obviously, that didn't go our way. But with him being out there, come back out there, and just try to support us, it was big for us. Okay, we have a question from Neil McCready. Go ahead, Neil. Uh, yeah, for both of you guys, I was curious if uh, you have gotten to a point where you've made decisions about what you're going to do uh, moving forward. And, and if you haven't, kind of what's your timetable and the process, I guess, you, you plan to, to use to make that decision? Uh, that's for another day. Yeah, right now, just kind of taking in this loss, so. That's about it. Okay, we have guys, we're going to let the players go. Is there any final questions for Coach Kiffin? Okay, we have one from Taylor Kurek with WDAM. Go ahead, Taylor. Hey, Coach, I wonder if you can just speak to Dontario Drummond and his development in your time there, and obviously he's going to have a chance to play at the next level. What is it about him that that makes him just a great wide receiver and could succeed at the next level? Yeah, I think Drum will play a long time at the next level. Um, he'll be a great special teams player, even though we don't utilize him on that stuff in the core of special teams. But really strong, hard to bring down, um, played through a lot of injuries, and, and really had a real special year and, and great kid. All right, thanks, Coach. All right, guys, thank you.